Do you know that a single discovery can change everything we thought we knew about human history? Part 7, DNA Revelations. As the researchers prepared for the genetic analysis of Aria, the anticipation was palpable. Her preservation in the permafrost had kept not only her body but also her DNA remarkably intact, offering the team an unprecedented opportunity to unlock secrets coded within her genes. Unlike the partial degraded DNA samples extracted from other Neanderthal remains, Aria's genome held the potential for a full genetic sequence. This breakthrough could shed light on her species' unique adaptations, health traits, and connections to modern humans, expanding the scientific understanding of how Neanderthals and Homo sapiens intermingled, evolved, and possibly even shared traits across generations. The first step involved a careful extraction process to ensure that Aria's genetic material remained uncontaminated. In a sterile environment, geneticists isolated samples from her bone marrow and soft tissues, segments where DNA tends to be well-preserved. Each sample was treated with extreme care, avoiding exposure to outside contaminants that might interfere with the sequencing process. Using next-generation sequencing technology, they began decoding her genome, a meticulous process that would reconstruct the genetic blueprint of this ancient Neanderthal, one nucleotide at a time. The researchers knew that Aria's DNA could reveal not only her individual story but also larger patterns about her species' history, adaptations, and relationships with other early humans. One of the first revelations came from examining genes linked to cold adaptation. Aria's DNA showed specific markers that highlighted her community's evolutionary response to their harsh environment. Certain gene variants associated with fat metabolism were present. Adaptations that allowed Neanderthals like Aria to efficiently process high-fat diets and store energy, critical for survival in freezing conditions. These genetic traits aligned with the evidence of reindeer and fatty animal remains in her diet, supporting the idea that Neanderthals were biologically equipped to thrive in extreme climates by metabolizing energy-dense foods. These adaptations spoke volumes about the resilience and resourcefulness of Aria's people whose survival depended on not only their diet but on physiological traits embedded deep within their genes. Aria's genetic profile also revealed a few surprises regarding immunity. Her DNA contained specific markers linked to immunity genes, variants that seemed tuned to fight off particular pathogens and parasites found in cold environments. Researchers hypothesized that Neanderthals, living in close quarters and sharing resources, developed strong immune responses that helped them resist infections common to densely populated or resource-scarce communities. Interestingly, some of these immune markers still appeared in modern human genomes, particularly among populations in Europe and Asia, suggesting that these genes were passed down through interbreeding between Neanderthals and early Homo sapiens. This genetic inheritance provided evidence of ancient interactions between the species, where beneficial traits like immune resistance found their way into the human gene pool, offering an evolutionary advantage that persists even today. One of the most compelling findings from Aria's genome analysis was the presence of genes linked to cognitive abilities and neurological development. While Neanderthals were once thought to have been intellectually inferior to Homo sapiens, Aria's genetic code hinted at cognitive capacities that were more similar to those of modern humans than previously believed. Her genome contained gene sequences related to brain development and function, genes that have been associated with complex thought processes, memory, and social behaviors in modern humans. This genetic evidence aligned with the discoveries of her crafted clothing, possible medicinal plant use, and ritualistic objects, suggesting that Neanderthals had the neurological foundation necessary for social bonding, cultural practices, and perhaps even rudimentary spirituality, as geneticists analyzed Aria's DNA further, they found evidence of interbreeding between Neanderthals and early Homo sapiens, a discovery that added depth to the story of human evolution. Aria's genome contained segments that were strikingly similar to sequences found in the DNA of modern humans, particularly those of European and Asian descent. This genetic overlap suggested that interbreeding had been more extensive than previously thought creating a shared lineage that linked modern humans to their Neanderthal relatives in complex ways. These genetic exchanges likely occurred over thousands of years, 
with early humans and Neanderthals encountering one another in overlapping territories and forming bonds that transcended species. Welcome to History with Fitbot. Today, we're diving into an extraordinary find, a perfectly preserved Neanderthal named Arya, frozen in Siberian permafrost. Join us as we uncover her incredible story and its profound impact. Part 1. The Discovery The Siberian wilderness, known for its harsh, unyielding terrain and biting winters, stretches vast and untamed under the Ural Mountains, an ancient range dividing Europe from Asia. The expedition team, composed of archaeologists, paleontologists, and climate scientists, arrived here in pursuit of studying the region's climatic shifts and prehistoric life. Though they had found scattered animal fossils and occasional prehistoric artifacts in the region, nothing could have prepared them for the breathtaking find they were about to make. Beneath the thick Siberian permafrost, in a small remote valley, the team stumbled upon a hardened layer of ice that appeared slightly unusual in texture and coloration. Curious, the team chipped away carefully, using specialized tools to avoid damaging any underlying layers. It was then that they began to see something truly remarkable, human-like features slowly emerging through the frozen crystal, preserved for tens of thousands of years. They had found something extraordinary, though none could yet comprehend the scale of it. It was not merely the skeleton of a Neanderthal, the remains they had initially thought would be their most exciting find. It was an entire, intact body, the shock of this realization set in gradually as they uncovered more of the figure. What was encased within the ice was unlike anything previously recorded in the history of archaeology. This was an ancient hominid, and its form was shockingly complete. The posture, faint facial features, the texture of skin, and faint indications of clothing seemed to echo through time, locked within a frozen cocoon. As they looked closer, the defining characteristics of the figure became more apparent. Heavy brow ridges, robust muscles, and a certain structure to the skull that suggested this was not a Homo sapien but a Neanderthal. The stunning level of preservation led the team to realize that they were staring into the past in a way no archaeologist had ever been able to. The team's initial excitement was quickly accompanied by a heavy realization. This was a momentous find that would require meticulous planning, coordination, and unprecedented levels of care to handle properly. Field director Dr. Elena Voronov, who had dedicated her life to exploring the ancient history of Eurasia, knew the implications of this find could reshape the understanding of human evolution. She immediately contacted a network of scientific and academic organizations across Russia, Europe, and North America, preparing them for what could be one of the greatest archaeological discoveries of the century. The logistical challenges were staggering. Siberia's permafrost was as unforgiving as it was protective of its ancient inhabitants. The process of excavation would be delicate, with every tool, action, and precaution taken to preserve both the ancient body and its surrounding context. They named the Neanderthal Arya, inspired by the haunting beauty of the frozen figure, which appeared almost peaceful within the icy embrace. The choice of name symbolized a song from the past, an echo of life that had resonated through tens of thousands of years. Arya was not just a relic of history. She was a representative of an ancient life, a being who had once walked, hunted, and perhaps even loved in a world that existed far beyond any written record. The team knew that Arya would provide insights not only into the anatomy of Neanderthals, but potentially into their daily lives, diets, social structures, and even interactions with early humans. Once initial plans were set, they began to excavate around Arya's body, chipping away the permafrost with a combination of heated tools and cryogenic equipment to prevent any sudden temperature change that could compromise the preservation. As they worked, they marveled at the condition of her skin and clothing, elements that had survived. Due to the unique properties of permafrost, which acts as a natural preservative by slowing down bacterial activity and decomposition, this environment, cold and low in oxygen, created a perfect capsule that held Arya suspended in time, shielded from the forces that would have otherwise turned her remains to dust millennia ago. The team carefully packed her body into a specially designed cryogenic container that would keep her at the same temperature and humidity levels as the permafrost, ensuring her continued preservation as she was transported out of Siberia. 
The moment Area's frozen body was loaded onto the transport vehicle marked a turning point not only for the team but for the broader field of archaeology and anthropology. Everyone involved recognized that this was a once-in-a-lifetime discovery, an opportunity to bridge the gap between ancient history and modern science in a way that had never before been possible. The initial steps were complete, but the real journey was only beginning. With Arya on her way to Moscow, the scientific community prepared for what would soon become a global phenomenon. The analysis of this frozen Neanderthal had the potential to rewrite chapters in the story of human evolution, offering insight into a lost world that would redefine what it meant to be human. The next steps were crucial. In Moscow, scientists and preservation specialists prepared for the arrival of Arya by setting up a state-of-the-art laboratory that could accommodate the specific requirements of her preservation. They coordinated with geneticists, anatomists, and historians, building an interdisciplinary team capable of studying every possible aspect of her body and the artifacts surrounding her. This was a monumental task that involved everything from mapping the origins of the fibers in her clothing to analyzing microscopic particles trapped within her lungs, which might reveal details of her environment and health. The scientists' minds raced with questions. What kind of life had she led? What had she seen and experienced in a world so vastly different from ours? And most importantly, how had she ended up here, frozen and preserved in a pristine valley of Siberia? As Arya arrived in Moscow, the anticipation was palpable. The world watched as the media documented each step, with headlines declaring her as the Neanderthal from the ice and humanity's forgotten ancestor. The research team carefully began their work, thawing Arya in a controlled manner over several days, allowing them to examine her tissues without risking damage. From every angle, Arya's body held clues, stories encoded in her bones, muscles, and even the faint lines of her skin. This preservation gave them access to elements of Neanderthal biology that had only been speculated about, like the appearance of her facial features, the texture of her hair, and the contours of her hands. This wasn't just a Neanderthal skeleton, it was a time capsule. Every detail of her life was etched into her body. Her diet, injuries, environment, and perhaps even her final moments. What could have caused her to perish in such a remote area? Was she lost, injured, or seeking something in the wilderness? As the scientists prepared to unravel these mysteries, they understood that Arya was more than a discovery. She was a window into the shared journey of humankind. The world waited in anticipation as each day brought them closer to understanding a life long lost to history, but now waiting to speak once again. Part 2. The Global Excitement the world stirred with a sense of wonder and anticipation when news of Area's discovery emerged. Media outlets, scientific journals, and social networks buzzed with discussions about this Neanderthal, preserved so well in the Siberian permafrost that her features, clothing, and even hair had survived millennia. From Moscow to New York, Beijing to Johannesburg, scientists and the public alike were captivated by this unprecedented look into a past human relative, the discovery reignited interest in human evolution, with people from all walks of life finding themselves drawn to Arya's story. The scientific community reacted quickly and with immense enthusiasm. Archaeologists, anthropologists, geneticists, and historians recognized that Arya was no ordinary find. Her pristine state opened the door to exploring not only her biology but also the social and environmental context of her life. Leading universities and institutions reached out to Dr. Voronov and her team, offering resources, technology, and funding to support the comprehensive study of Aria. Governments, too, saw the cultural and historical significance of this discovery and pledged financial and logistical assistance to ensure her safe examination and preservation. For the first time in history, a Neanderthal wasn't just a skeletal reconstruction, but a preserved individual who could reveal secrets about her species and their interactions with early humans. Amidst the excitement, the ethical implications of Area's discovery were also discussed. The scientific community recognized the need for a balanced approach, as Aria was not merely a specimen but a once-living individual who had survived in a challenging and unfamiliar world, the debate raised questions about the respect owed to ancient human relatives and the importance of handling areas remains in a way that honored her life. 
anthropologists and ethicists proposed guidelines for working with her remains, balancing the desire for knowledge with respect for her as a representative of an extinct lineage. Some even argued that Aria's discovery could help spark discussions about the shared heritage and respect owed to all humankind's ancestors. Public reaction was equally profound. Across the globe, people were captivated by this ancient woman who had walked the earth tens of thousands of years ago. Social media posts circulated images of the laboratory preparations, hypotheses about her life, and discussions about how similar Neanderthals might have been to modern humans. The media quickly coined her as Arya, the Ice Neanderthal, a figure embodying mystery, resilience, and the connection between ancient and modern human experiences. Schoolchildren wrote essays on Neanderthals, and communities hosted events to discuss Arya's significance, bridging the gap between scientific discovery and public fascination. The discovery brought humanity's ancient history to life, sparking an appreciation for the endurance of early humans in a dangerous and unforgiving world. While scientists worked around the clock to prepare for the thawing and analysis of Arya's body, global museums and educational institutions began organizing exhibitions dedicated to Neanderthals and early human history. Museums anticipated a surge in visitors, eager to learn more about Arya and her kind, the enigmatic Neanderthals. Experts in exhibit curation and interactive design brainstormed ways to create immersive experiences that could transport visitors to the Ice Age, allowing them to understand the lives of these ancient relatives on a more personal level. Plans were made for a traveling exhibit, Aria, a Neanderthal's journey, which would bring her story to cities around the world, complete with virtual reality reconstructions and educational programs tailored for different audiences. The world of scientific research was also fundamentally affected. Institutions dedicated resources to establish the ARIA Research Consortium, a global collaboration network that would allow scientists from diverse disciplines to work together on the study of ARIA. This consortium represented a unique model of interdisciplinary research, combining expertise in genetics, anthropology, climatology, and more to create a comprehensive understanding of Aria's life and her environment. The collaboration also enabled scientists to share findings in real time, ensuring that Aria's legacy could benefit humanity's collective knowledge on multiple levels. One of the most significant aspects of Aria's discovery was the possibility of extracting viable DNA, a prospect that ignited debates across academic circles. Researchers hoped that Aria's well-preserved state might allow them to retrieve genetic material that could reveal detailed information about Neanderthal physiology, health, and evolutionary traits. Geneticists eagerly anticipated the chance to study Aria's genome, potentially illuminating aspects of Neanderthal adaptation to cold climates, disease resistance, and unique biological features that set them apart from Homo sapiens. The comparison of her DNA with modern humans also raised questions about the extent of interbreeding between Neanderthals and early Homo sapiens, promising to add new layers to the story of human ancestry. However, as the media spotlight grew, so did the influx of theories and speculations surrounding Arya. Some saw her as a symbol of human endurance, an individual whose life bridged ancient history with today's scientific advancements. Others were fascinated by the potential spiritual and cultural beliefs that Arya's preserved body suggested, wondering if she had been part of burial rituals or ceremonies unique to Neanderthals. These speculations were fueled by the discovery of ochre and carved stones near her body, items which many anthropologists suggested could have had symbolic or ritualistic importance in her community. The public fascination added a human dimension to the scientific endeavor as people around the world followed each new finding with interest and empathy. International interest also brought challenges. Journalists and media outlets swarmed around the research facilities, eager for exclusive updates on the study's progress. With each step, the team faced the pressure of managing public expectations while ensuring the rigor and integrity of their scientific work. To maintain transparency and respect for areas remains, the research team implemented regular public briefings and updates through official channels, allowing people worldwide to follow along responsibly. This approach helped balance scientific confidentiality with the public's desire for involvement, creating a collaborative atmosphere where the excitement was shared but carefully guided. 
The excitement surrounding area's discovery also sparked a renaissance in archaeological funding. Governments and private donors saw the value in understanding humanity's ancient past and pledged resources for research on Neanderthals and other early hominids. Grants were offered to study not only Aria but also other potential sites in Siberia and Eurasia, igniting new archaeological projects focused on human evolution in the Pleistocene epoch. For the first time, a large-scale initiative emerged to trace the migration, adaptation, and survival patterns of ancient humans across the regions that would become modern Europe and Asia. Area's presence in the frozen ice had not only survived time but catalyzed a new wave of exploration, ensuring that her legacy would continue to shape science and understanding for years to come. As the world waited in anticipation, the researchers knew that their work had only begun. The first thaw was imminent, and as Area's form emerged from the frozen sheath that had held her for so long, each detail would offer a piece of the puzzle. Would Aria reveal insights into how Neanderthals interacted with their environments, adapted to extreme climates, and developed tools and social structures? Each question was a thread leading into a deeper mystery, a journey of discovery that linked past to present in ways unimaginable just a few weeks before. Part 3. The Initial Examination As Aria's frozen body arrived at the research laboratory in Moscow, the air was thick with anticipation. Scientists, preservation specialists, and technicians had prepared for weeks, assembling a state-of-the-art laboratory that could handle her thawing with the utmost precision. For the team, each step was crucial. Area's preservation in the permafrost meant she was remarkably intact, but even a minor miscalculation in the thawing process could cause irreversible damage. The team's goal was to maintain the delicate balance of temperature and humidity, allowing them to gradually bring Aria to room temperature while minimizing any risk to her soft tissues and potential DNA preservation. The initial examination began with a thorough documentation of Aria's external features. Her body was scanned using high-resolution imaging technologies, including 3D scanning and CT scans, to create a comprehensive digital model before the physical examination began. This model would act as a baseline for comparison as scientists moved through the thawing and analysis process, enabling them to observe any changes in real time and adjust their approach if necessary. From the outset, it was clear that Aria was unlike any other Neanderthal specimen previously discovered. Her skin, hair, and even the outlines of her facial features were preserved with a lifelike quality that allowed researchers to imagine what she might have looked like in life. As the thawing continued over several days, the team began their hands-on examination of Aria's external anatomy. Her facial features were the first to emerge in detail, displaying the characteristic Neanderthal structure, prominent brow ridges, a broad nose, and a robust jaw. Despite the rugged features, there was an unmistakable humanity to her face, a glimpse into the physical attributes of our distant relatives. Researchers noted that her nose was broader than typical Homo sapiens, likely an evolutionary adaptation to cold climates that allowed for better humidification and warming of the air she breathed in Siberia's freezing environment. Her hands, too, were notable, calloused, with short, broad fingers that suggested a life filled with physically demanding tasks, perhaps the gathering of firewood, hunting, or crafting tools. It wasn't just her body that captivated the team, it was also the remnants of her clothing, Unlike earlier discoveries that relied on fragmentary tools or artifacts to infer Neanderthal life, Aria's clothing offered direct evidence of her material culture. Draped in carefully arranged layers of animal furs and skins, Aria's attire hinted at the Neanderthal's advanced knowledge of clothing construction and survival strategies in extreme climates. The team observed evidence of stitching on the clothing, a discovery that pointed to an understanding of tailoring previously unknown in Neanderthals. Small punctures and traces of sinew suggested that bone needles or similar tools were used to piece together her garments, reinforcing the idea that Neanderthals had the skills to make functional, weather-resistant clothing. This level of craftsmanship highlighted a cultural sophistication that was still being debated within the scientific community. The clothing itself became an immediate focus of analysis. Textile specialists were brought in to examine the patterns of wear and the types of animal skins used hoping to identify the specific animals and techniques that contributed to her clothing. 
Microscopic analysis of the fibers revealed that Aria's garments likely came from a mix of animals, including reindeer, arctic fox, and possibly mammoth, a diverse range that indicated a deep understanding of local wildlife and resource availability. This choice of materials suggested that her community had knowledge of the properties of different furs and hides, perhaps selecting softer skins for warmth near the body and more durable ones as an outer layer. The realization that Neanderthals could craft such tailored garments overturned previous assumptions that they were limited to rough, unprocessed hides. With each new discovery, Aria's life became more vivid in the minds of the research team. Her preserved fingernails and hair, both remarkably intact, provided further insight into her health and lifestyle. The nails showed signs of wear and small nicks, consistent with someone accustomed to hard labor in a rugged environment while the hair analysis revealed traces of environmental particles that suggested she may have spent much of her life outdoors. Chemical analysis of her hair indicated exposure to smoke, which was consistent with the use of fire in her community. This evidence of controlled fire use, combined with her clothing, painted a picture of a society capable of adapting to harsh climates through technological and cultural means. As the analysis continued, the team began to speculate on the broader implications of these findings. The level of technological and social organization required to make tailored clothing and manage fire represented a high degree of adaptability among Neanderthals. It suggested that they were not only capable of survival but also of thriving in one of the harshest climates on Earth. This adaptability called into question the narrative that Neanderthals were simply primitive beings who faded into extinction due to a lack of sophistication compared to Homo sapiens. Aria's presence seemed to challenge that notion, showing that Neanderthals were innovative, resourceful, and perhaps even deeply connected to their environment in ways previously underestimated. In addition to her external features, Aria's preserved internal organs offered a wealth of information that was just beginning to be explored. While standard preservation methods in archaeology primarily focus on bones and teeth, Aria's frozen state meant that her organs, muscles, and soft tissues were almost entirely intact. As her body thawed, pathologists prepared to examine her respiratory system, digestive tract, and other vital organs, searching for clues about her health, diet, and the diseases that may have impacted her life. The team believed they might find signs of ailments common to Neanderthals, such as arthritis or chronic joint pain, which had been inferred from skeletal studies in other specimens. One unexpected discovery was the evidence of a healed fracture in her arm. It appeared that Aria had suffered a significant injury that left her with a break, but her body showed signs of recovery, suggesting that she may have received care and support from her community. The healed bone called into question assumptions about Neanderthal social structure, hinting at a level of empathy and social responsibility where injured members were cared for until they recovered. Such a finding aligned with recent studies that suggested Neanderthals might have had stronger social bonds and communal support systems than previously believed. As the examination reached its final stages, the team stood in awe of the mysteries Aria had already revealed. They had not only glimpsed her physical appearance and daily life, but had also been given insight into her community's complexity and adaptability. Aria represented more than just a well-preserved body. She was a testament to a culture and a species that had walked the earth alongside Homo sapiens, experiencing joys, sorrows, and struggles that mirrored our own. Each discovery, from her clothing to her injuries, brought scientists closer to understanding a people who were not so different from modern humans. The world continued to watch as the initial examination drew to a close, each new insight about Aria generating questions that would fuel further research for years to come. She had already reshaped the narrative surrounding Neanderthals, and with more tests and analyses yet to come, Aria's legacy was only beginning. In this preserved body from an age-long past, humanity had found a bridge to its ancient relatives, opening doors to empathy, respect, and a renewed curiosity about the journey of life that binds all species across time. Part 4. Ancient Clues in Aria's Clothing As the examination shifted focus to the intricate details of Aria's clothing, excitement filled the laboratory. The team realized that her attire was more than just a protective layer. It was a window into the technological prowess, resourcefulness, and cultural expressions of Neanderthal society. 
Unlike skeletal remains, which could only suggest behavior, Arya's clothing was a tangible representation of how she and her community adapted to the unforgiving Siberian environment. Every seam, stitch, and material choice carried a story, and the team was determined to understand each aspect of this sophisticated ensemble. The first layers of Arya's clothing were constructed from animal furs, carefully wrapped and layered to insulate against the brutal cold. Scientists noted that her outermost layer appeared to be made from the thick, dense fur of a reindeer a choice that made perfect sense given reindeer fur's insulating properties and water resistance. Beneath this, softer, more pliable hides from smaller animals, such as arctic foxes, formed inner layers close to her skin, providing a softer barrier against the cold without adding bulk. This layering technique suggested that Neanderthals understood how to create garments that were not only functional but also customized for comfort and mobility a crucial adaptation for a nomadic lifestyle dependent on hunting and gathering. As researchers examined Arya's garments more closely, they began to notice fine stitching along the seams, indicating a level of craftsmanship that had rarely been associated with Neanderthals. Tiny punctures in the fabric suggested that bone needles or finely sharpened stones were used in the sewing process. While such tools had been found in other archaeological sites, this was the first direct evidence of their application in clothing construction. The meticulous stitching implied that Neanderthals possessed a degree of patience and skill, taking the time to create garments that fit well and held up under harsh conditions. This revelation provided a glimpse into the complex skills that Neanderthals had developed and passed down, skills that were, perhaps, not so different from those of early Homo sapiens. The material analysis of Arya's clothing was equally revealing. Using advanced spectrometry techniques, scientists identified traces of natural oils and tannins, likely from animal brains, which Neanderthals might have used in a primitive tanning process to soften and preserve hides. This process would have prevented the animal skins from becoming stiff or brittle in the cold, allowing them to be worn and layered without cracking. Such an approach to hide treatment showed an understanding of chemical processing in Neanderthals' clothing production a practice that would have required knowledge passed down through generations. The presence of these oils and natural chemicals underscored the notion that Neanderthal society possessed a sophisticated knowledge of material science long before such concepts were formally recognized. The discovery of small decorative elements on areas' clothing opened another layer of intrigue. Fragments of colored pigments, likely derived from ochre, were embedded within the seams of her garments. Though faint, these traces indicated that Neanderthals may have decorated their clothing with symbolic colors, using the Earth's natural pigments to create patterns or markings. Anthropologists speculated that this decoration could have served various purposes, perhaps as a form of personal expression, a cultural identifier within her group, or even as a talisman meant to bring luck or protection. The presence of ochre, a mineral often associated with ritual and symbolic use in both Neanderthal and early Homo sapien sites, suggested that Arya's community attached special significance to certain colors and materials, adding a new dimension to our understanding of Neanderthal spirituality and identity. Further examination revealed that certain parts of her clothing had been repaired multiple times, showing evidence of patchwork and stitching layers over worn spots. This demonstrated that Arya and her community likely valued and maintained their possessions, repairing items instead of discarding them. The meticulous patchwork on her clothing suggested a sustainable approach to resource use, one that required both skill and foresight. These repairs pointed to a communal sense of responsibility, where individuals might have shared resources or skills to keep each other's garments functional in the challenging environment. With each layer analyzed, the researchers gained insight into the economic and social organization of Arya's group. The construction of such clothing would have required the collaborative efforts of hunters, who provided the animal hides, and artisans, who crafted and repaired the garments. This interdependence hinted at a structured social system where skills were specialized and shared, reinforcing the idea that Neanderthal communities were organized, with roles potentially designated by skill and experience. This model of Neanderthal society began to paint a picture that challenged the outdated view of Neanderthals as solitary or purely survival-driven beings. 
The team also began to speculate on how Aria's clothing choices might have communicated information about her role or status within her group. Some researchers proposed that decorative elements or unique stitching styles could signify rank, age, or familial ties. In indigenous communities worldwide, clothing often reflects identity, serving as both a practical and symbolic marker of one's place within the social hierarchy. If Neanderthals shared this tradition, then Aria's clothing might hold deeper meanings related to her individual story and position in her society. This notion introduced a profound new perspective on Neanderthal social structures, hinting at cultural depth and identity beyond survival alone. The discovery of beads and bone ornaments sewn into Aria's clothing added yet another layer of complexity. These ornaments were made from small animal bones, meticulously carved and smoothed, possibly worn as adornments or symbolic tokens. The presence of such decoration led anthropologists to consider the aesthetic and spiritual dimensions of Neanderthal life. If Aria's clothing contained these adornments, it suggested that her community had a concept of beauty or perhaps a belief in charms that provided protection or held special significance. Such insight supported the growing hypothesis that Neanderthals had an artistic sense and used personal ornamentation as a form of self-expression or cultural identity. Aria's well-preserved attire also hinted at Neanderthal interactions with other hominids. The complex construction of her clothing resembled techniques found in Homo sapien communities that would have lived in similar cold environments. This raised the tantalizing question of whether Neanderthals had engaged in cultural exchange with early Homo sapiens, learning or sharing techniques for making clothing suited to cold climates. If evidence of such cultural diffusion could be substantiated, it would represent a groundbreaking discovery in the understanding of early human interactions and the transfer of knowledge across species. It hinted at the possibility of collaboration or peaceful coexistence, rather than purely competitive dynamics between Neanderthals and Homo sapiens. As the analysis concluded, the team reflected on the significance of Aria's clothing. Each stitch, repair, and decorative element represented the legacy of a people who understood their environment, valued community, and perhaps even saw beauty in self-expression. Aria's attire encapsulated a world far removed from ours, yet remarkably familiar in its ingenuity and humanity. Through her clothing, scientists saw Neanderthals not only as survivors but as creators and collaborators, beings who innovated and adapted just as Homo sapiens did. The discoveries in Aria's clothing challenged scientists to rethink the nature of early human societies, prompting new questions about how cultures developed and evolved side by side, converging on common solutions to share challenges. As the team moved on to explore the contents of Aria's stomach and diet in Part 5, they carried with them a profound respect for the Neanderthal ingenuity preserved in her garments. Her clothing was more than fabric and fur. It was a testament to a life lived with resilience, skill, and perhaps even pride. With each layer stripped away, Aria's world came into clearer focus, revealing the ingenuity and adaptability of a species once considered primitive but now seen as equally complex and remarkable. Part 5. Insights into Neanderthal Diet as Aria's body continued to thaw, the team turned their focus to what might be the most unexpected source of information, her stomach contents. The preservation of her digestive system, a remarkable benefit of the permafrost, allowed scientists to examine the remnants of her last meal, offering unprecedented insights into her diet and, by extension, the dietary habits of Neanderthals as a whole. The analysis would involve chemical and microscopic examination of the partially digested material revealing the types of food available to her in prehistoric Siberia and providing clues about her environment and health. The team prepared samples with great care, knowing that each fragment could reveal a new aspect of her life and the Neanderthal world. Early findings from microscopic analysis showed a mix of plant fibers and animal tissue fragments, which indicated that Aria's diet was far more diverse than previous studies of Neanderthal remains had suggested. For many years, the prevailing view had been that Neanderthals were primarily meat-eaters, with a diet heavily reliant on large game. However, the evidence from Aria's stomach suggested a balanced diet, one that included a variety of plant-based foods alongside animal protein. This discovery challenged long-held assumptions, hinting that Neanderthals might have had a more complex approach to foraging, 
one that involved an understanding of seasonal plants and the nutritional benefits of a mixed diet. To further explore the plant materials, botanists were brought in to identify the types of fibers and residues in area stomach. Using high-powered microscopes and advanced spectrometry techniques, they identified traces of wild berries, roots, and seeds, as well as tiny remnants of edible leaves. These findings pointed to a Neanderthal diet that included foraged vegetation, likely gathered from the surrounding environment in the warmer months. The presence of these plant materials suggested that Aria's community had an in-depth knowledge of the edible flora in their region, potentially even developing seasonal foraging practices to make the most of their environment's offerings. This implied a connection to their ecosystem that went beyond hunting, suggesting a well-rounded approach to sustenance that leveraged both animal and plant resources. But Aria's diet did not rely on plants alone. Analysis of the animal tissue fragments revealed the remains of reindeer and possibly smaller mammals, such as hare or arctic fox. The presence of reindeer, in particular, suggested that her community engaged in hunting larger animals, likely working together to bring down prey that provided significant amounts of meat and fur. Reindeer would have been a staple for Neanderthals in cold climates, offering high-fat, calorie-rich meat necessary for survival in freezing temperatures. The combination of large game and small animals hinted at a dynamic hunting strategy, where her community may have hunted opportunistically, taking advantage of whatever was available to sustain them in a harsh environment. Chemical analysis of the meat remnants revealed another fascinating detail, traces of cooked proteins. This discovery suggested that Neanderthals, at least in Aria's community, might have used fire to cook their food. The presence of cooked food would indicate an understanding of fire's benefits, including the reduction of pathogens and the increased digestibility of cooked meat. Although evidence of fire use in Neanderthal sites had been found previously, Aria's meal provided direct evidence that they may have applied cooking practices in their daily lives, adding a new layer of sophistication to their survival strategies. This use of fire for cooking demonstrated that Neanderthals, like Homo sapiens, were capable of modifying their environment to improve their quality of life. As the researchers delved deeper into the plant residues, they uncovered an interesting discovery. Traces of bitter-tasting plants with medicinal properties. Among the remnants were particles of yarrow and chamomile, plants that held little nutritional value but were often used for their medicinal effects. This finding raised questions about whether Neanderthals had an understanding of herbal remedies possibly using plants to treat ailments or improve digestion. While it's difficult to draw definitive conclusions, the presence of these plants opened the possibility that Aria's community possessed a rudimentary knowledge of medicinal practices. Such an understanding would suggest that Neanderthals had developed health-related practices, perhaps relying on the wisdom of experienced members within their groups to identify and utilize plants with therapeutic properties. The examination of Aria's diet also revealed signs of seasonal adaptation. Some of the plant materials found in her stomach, such as certain types of berries and roots, were only available in the warmer months, indicating that her community likely followed a seasonal dietary pattern. This seasonal approach suggested a deep understanding of the environment, with Neanderthals timing their movements and foraging activities based on the availability of certain foods. During the harsh winter months, they likely relied more heavily on meat and fat from hunted animals, while spring and summer provided access to a wider range of plant-based foods. This ability to adapt to seasonal changes highlighted a level of intelligence and foresight, traits that reflected a sophisticated approach to survival in a challenging climate. In addition to the nutritional elements, the analysis provided clues about Aria's health and physical condition. Small parasites were discovered in her digestive system, likely ingested from uncooked meat or contaminated water sources. These parasites suggested that Neanderthals, like many early humans, dealt with health challenges from their environment. Despite these parasites, Aria showed signs of robust health, likely thanks to a nutrient-dense diet and the physical demands of her lifestyle, which kept her fit and strong. The presence of parasites reminded the researchers that, despite her preservation, Aria lived in a world where the threat of disease was constant a reality that shaped her community's survival strategies. The diversity of Aria's diet underscored the adaptability and resilience of her community. By incorporating a range of plants and animals, 
they were able to sustain themselves even in the cold, barren landscapes of prehistoric Siberia. This balance of hunting and foraging suggested that Neanderthals had a more complex understanding of their ecosystem than previously acknowledged, one that allowed them to survive in a place where resources were scarce and survival depended on ingenuity and flexibility. It became clear to the researchers that Neanderthals were not solely dependent on large game but were skilled foragers and hunters, capable of surviving on whatever the land provided. The insights into area's diet opened new discussions among anthropologists and archaeologists worldwide. The diversity and seasonal nature of her food sources suggested that Neanderthals were not passive consumers of their environment but active participants, shaping their diet based on availability and need. This sophisticated approach to diet and resource management highlighted a nuanced relationship with the environment, challenging outdated perceptions of Neanderthals as simple, meat-focused hunter-gatherers. Instead, they appeared as adaptable omnivores with a dynamic understanding of their ecosystem, capable of balancing protein, fats, and seasonal plant foods in a way that ensured their survival across generations. As the team completed their examination of area's stomach contents, they prepared for the next phase of their research, focusing on the broader cultural and symbolic aspects of her life. Her diet had already revealed so much about her physical existence, but other clues awaited them, promising to shed light on her community's beliefs, rituals, and perhaps even their spirituality. In Part 6, the team would turn their attention to the objects and pigments found around her body, hoping to uncover signs of ritual practices that could redefine our understanding of Neanderthal culture. Part 6. Uncovering Signs of Rituals As the researchers completed their analysis of area's physical characteristics and diet, they shifted their attention to an array of artifacts discovered surrounding her body. These objects, carefully arranged within the ice, were not random items but seemed to hold a unique significance, suggesting that Arya might have been part of a burial or ritual ceremony. The careful placement of smooth stones, traces of ochre, and a carved bone near her body hinted at something more profound, a potential glimpse into the spiritual beliefs and symbolic practices of Neanderthal society. This discovery was groundbreaking, for while Neanderthals had been known to bury their dead, evidence of ritualistic behavior was still a subject of debate among anthropologists. The team examined the smooth stones first. These stones, worn and polished to a degree that indicated intentional shaping, were unlike anything typically found in Siberian soil. Their rounded edges and uniformity suggested they had been selected carefully and possibly carried from another location, hinting at a special significance. As scientists examined their surfaces under a microscope, they found traces of natural pigments, including ochre, which had been applied to the stones, possibly as a form of decoration or symbolic coloring. The presence of these stones, polished and painted, raised questions about their purpose. Were they symbols, tokens, or perhaps even markers for specific rituals? Ochre, in particular, has long been associated with early human burial practices and is commonly thought to represent a symbolic connection to life and death. Finding it in the context of Arya's resting place led the researchers to believe that Neanderthals, like early Homo sapiens, might have attributed spiritual significance to certain colors or materials. The use of ochre, a vibrant, earthy pigment, may have symbolized blood, earth, or a connection to ancestral spirits, a theory supported by similar practices found in other ancient cultures around the world. The reddish hues of the ochre on the stones and near Arya's body suggested that her community might have used it as part of a ceremonial act, marking her with a pigment that symbolized continuity or transition. In addition to the stones, the carved bone provided another intriguing clue. Carved with small, deliberate notches and patterns, it appeared to be more than just a tool. It looked like an object meant to convey meaning. The bone, likely from a reindeer or similar animal, was smoothed along the edges, and the notches formed a pattern that could have held symbolic or even communicative value. Some archaeologists suggested it could be a form of early art or even a type of tally or record-keeping device while others believed it might represent a totem or protective symbol placed with Arya as a form of guidance or protection in the afterlife. This discovery added depth to the understanding of Neanderthal culture, suggesting they may have had complex social practices and belief systems that extended beyond the material needs of survival. As researchers dug deeper into the possible meanings of these artifacts, 
they considered the role of such items in fostering community bonds and identity. In modern societies, symbols and rituals play a critical role in uniting people, reinforcing shared beliefs and values. If Neanderthals engaged in similar practices, these stones, pigments, and carved bones might represent a deeply rooted cultural identity, one that transcended individual lives and connected them to something larger, a shared history, belief system, or collective memory. This sense of shared purpose, marked by rituals and symbolic objects, might have provided Neanderthal groups with a sense of identity and belonging, qualities that are fundamentally human. Anthropologists began to explore the possibility that Aria's burial, if indeed it was a burial, reflected a respect for the deceased, a characteristic once thought to be exclusive to Homo sapiens. Such respect could signify that Neanderthals viewed life and death as part of a continuum, a passage to something beyond the physical world. The placement of symbolic objects around Arya suggested that her community might have believed in an afterlife or at least held a sense of reverence for those who passed on. If these practices were truly ritualistic, they revealed an emotional and spiritual dimension to Neanderthals that had often been denied in previous research. Another fascinating aspect was the spatial arrangement of the artifacts. The stones and bone appeared to be arranged in a semicircle around Arya's upper body, leading scientists to theorize that the placement might have symbolic meaning, perhaps marking a passage or boundary. In many ancient cultures, circular or semicircular arrangements held significance, symbolizing cycles, protection, or the boundary between the earthly and spiritual realms. The orientation of these artifacts around Arya's body seemed intentional, as if her community had constructed a protective or symbolic barrier around her, perhaps to guard her spirit or mark her transition from life. This spatial awareness in the arrangement added a layer of complexity to their potential ritual practices, highlighting a cognitive depth that indicated forward thinking and cultural intentionality. Some researchers even speculated that the ochre and stone arrangement could represent a form of proto-religion. While it's impossible to say definitively, this theory suggests that Neanderthals might have held beliefs about life, death, and perhaps an early concept of the supernatural. If true, this would make them among the first hominids to conceive of an existence beyond the physical world, a trait that many consider uniquely human. The presence of ritualistic symbols and practices surrounding Arya added fuel to ongoing discussions about what truly defines humanity and how deeply rooted spirituality and symbolism are in our collective ancestry. The significance of these findings was not lost on researchers, who understood that these artifacts might represent the first tangible evidence of Neanderthal belief systems. This discovery prompted a re-evaluation of earlier Neanderthal sites, where similar artifacts had been overlooked or dismissed as merely utilitarian. Arya's burial site suggested that, at least in her community, the Neanderthals held rituals and placed symbolic importance on objects, colors, and possibly even spaces, indicating a form of social memory or tradition. If these artifacts were indeed ceremonial, they would show that Neanderthals, like Homo sapiens, used rituals as a way to cope with the mysteries of life and death finding meaning in objects and actions that went beyond the physical. As researchers concluded their analysis of the artifacts, they were left with more questions than answers. What had driven Arya's community to create and place these objects with her? Were they honoring her as an individual, or was this a practice extended to all members of her community? The artifacts around her body offered tantalizing clues, but they also reminded the scientists that much of Neanderthal culture would remain a mystery accessible only through scattered fragments and careful interpretation. Yet even in these fragments, there was a profound sense of connection, a realization that despite the distance in time, Neanderthals may have experienced life's essential mysteries in ways that were strikingly familiar. With the insights from these artifacts, the researchers prepared to delve into another domain of Aria's preserved legacy, her DNA. In Part 7, they would begin the genetic analysis, hoping to uncover a biological bridge between Neanderthals and modern humans, revealing genetic traits that could illuminate her resilience and adaptability. The artifacts around Arya's body had already changed the way scientists thought about Neanderthals, but her DNA promised to deepen that understanding, connecting her past to the present in a way that only genetics could. Part 7. DNA Revelations As the researchers prepared for the genetic analysis of Arya, the anticipation was palpable. Her preservation in the permafrost had kept not only her body but also her DNA remarkably intact, offering the team an unprecedented opportunity to unlock secrets coded within her genes. Unlike the partial degraded DNA samples extracted from other Neanderthal remains, 
Arya's genome held the potential for a full genetic sequence. This breakthrough could shed light on her species' unique adaptations, health traits, and connections to modern humans, expanding the scientific understanding of how Neanderthals and Homo sapiens intermingled, evolved, and possibly even shared traits across generations. The first step involved a careful extraction process to ensure that Arya's genetic material remained uncontaminated. In a sterile environment, geneticists isolated samples from her bone marrow and soft tissues, segments where DNA tends to be well-preserved. Each sample was treated with extreme care, avoiding exposure to outside contaminants that might interfere with the sequencing process. Using next-generation sequencing technology, they began decoding her genome, a meticulous process that would reconstruct the genetic blueprint of this ancient Neanderthal, one nucleotide at a time. The researchers knew that Aria's DNA could reveal not only her individual story but also larger patterns about her species' history, adaptations, and relationships with other early humans. One of the first revelations came from examining genes linked to cold adaptation. Aria's DNA showed specific markers that highlighted her community's evolutionary response to their harsh environment. Certain gene variants associated with fat metabolism were present. Adaptations that allowed Neanderthals like Arya to efficiently process high-fat diets and store energy, critical for survival in freezing conditions. These genetic traits aligned with the evidence of reindeer and fatty animal remains in her diet, supporting the idea that Neanderthals were biologically equipped to thrive in extreme climates by metabolizing energy-dense foods. These adaptations spoke volumes about the resilience and resourcefulness of Arya's people, whose survival depended on not only their diet but on physiological traits embedded deep within their genes. Aria's genetic profile also revealed a few surprises regarding immunity. Her DNA contained specific markers linked to immunity genes, variants that seemed tuned to fight off particular pathogens and parasites found in cold environments. Researchers hypothesized that Neanderthals, living in close quarters and sharing resources, developed strong immune responses that helped them resist infections common to densely populated or resource-scarce communities. Interestingly, some of these immune markers still appeared in modern human genomes, particularly among populations in Europe and Asia, suggesting that these genes were passed down through interbreeding between Neanderthals and early Homo sapiens. This genetic inheritance provided evidence of ancient interactions between the species, where beneficial traits like immune resistance found their way into the human gene pool, offering an evolutionary advantage that persists even today. One of the most compelling findings from Aria's genome analysis was the presence of genes linked to cognitive abilities and neurological development. While Neanderthals were once thought to have been intellectually inferior to Homo sapiens, Aria's genetic code hinted at cognitive capacities that were more similar to those of modern humans than previously believed. Her genome contained gene sequences related to brain development and function, genes that have been associated with complex thought processes, memory, and social behaviors in modern humans. This genetic evidence aligned with the discoveries of her crafted clothing, possible medicinal plant use, and ritualistic objects, suggesting that Neanderthals had the neurological foundation necessary for social bonding, cultural practices, and perhaps even rudimentary spirituality, as geneticists analyzed Aria's DNA further, they found evidence of interbreeding between Neanderthals and early Homo sapiens, a discovery that added depth to the story of human evolution. Aria's genome contained segments that were strikingly similar to sequences found in the DNA of modern humans, particularly those of European and Asian descent. This genetic overlap suggested that interbreeding had been more extensive than previously thought creating a shared lineage that linked modern humans to their Neanderthal relatives in complex ways. These genetic exchanges likely occurred over thousands of years, with early humans and Neanderthals encountering one another in overlapping territories and forming bonds that transcended species boundaries. Aria's DNA served as a biological record of these ancient connections, illustrating a shared evolutionary journey that reached across millennia. Among the geneticists' most exciting discoveries was a variant in Aria's DNA associated with pain perception. This variant, which influences how individuals experience physical discomfort, was also found in a subset of modern humans, leading researchers to hypothesize that certain pain-related genetic traits might have originated with Neanderthals. 
In the context of Neanderthal life, such a genetic trait could have been advantageous, perhaps dulling the perception of pain to cope with the constant physical demands of survival, hunting, and migration. This insight added a humanizing element to Aria's story, as scientists considered how her genetic traits might have shaped her experience of the world, affecting not only her physical endurance but her everyday interactions and resilience. Aria's DNA also held clues about her health and physical condition. Genetic markers associated with conditions like arthritis were present, supporting skeletal evidence from other Neanderthal remains that pointed to a prevalence of joint issues and chronic pain in their communities. These health challenges likely stemmed from their demanding lifestyle, as the wear and tear on their bodies accumulated over years of rigorous physical activity. However, Aria's genome showed some adaptations that may have mitigated these issues, including strong bone density genes that helped her endure physically challenging tasks without injury. These findings underscored the balance between genetic limitations and adaptations within Neanderthal populations revealing how they navigated both the advantages and drawbacks of their biological inheritance. The genetic analysis also provided insights into Aria's ancestry and potential family structure. By comparing her DNA to other Neanderthal genomes, scientists were able to estimate the degree of relatedness within her community, suggesting that she might have belonged to a close-knit group with shared lineage. This genetic cohesion implied that Neanderthal groups likely lived in smaller, family-centered units, where genetic diversity was limited due to isolated habitats and scarce population numbers. Such insights added to the understanding of Neanderthal social organization, as researchers speculated that these close genetic ties might have fostered strong community bonds, mutual support, and collaboration essential for survival in challenging climates. The study of Aria's genome also highlighted the complexity of human evolution, revealing that the interactions between Neanderthals and Homo sapiens were more intricate than previously assumed. Her DNA showed that Neanderthals contributed more than just physical traits to the human lineage. They also passed down behavioral and cognitive traits that have left lasting impacts on modern human psychology, social behaviors, and health. The genetic similarities found in Aria's DNA not only connected her to modern humans but suggested that the legacy of her species lives on in ways that go beyond physical appearance, influencing behaviors and traits that remain relevant in contemporary society. As the genetic analysis concluded, the team reflected on the profound legacy embedded within Aria's DNA. Her genetic code was more than a map of Neanderthal biology. It was a bridge that linked the past to the present revealing shared human traits that had persisted through millennia. Through her DNA, Arya had contributed to a deeper understanding of what it means to be human, showing that humanity's evolutionary journey is far more intertwined and complex than previously thought. With the genetic analysis complete, researchers prepared for the next phase of their investigation, shifting focus to the environmental and health impacts on Arya's life. In Part 8, they would delve into the physical stresses, injuries, and healing processes evident in her body, hoping to reconstruct the day-to-day -day realities of Neanderthal survival. Each discovery, from diet to DNA, had brought scientists closer to understanding the full picture of Aria's life, and the examination of her health and endurance promised to further illuminate the human resilience shared across ancient and modern lives. Part 8. A Window into Neanderthal Health as the genetic analysis of Aria revealed tantalizing details about her lineage and adaptations, researchers turned their attention to her health and physical condition, hoping to reconstruct the lived experiences of this ancient Neanderthal. Through the preserved state of her body, scientists could examine physical markers of illness, injury, and resilience that had shaped her daily life. The study of Aria's health was not merely an exploration of her biology. It was a journey into the challenges, endurance, and communal care practices that defined Neanderthal existence in an unforgiving world. The first clue to Aria's health challenges emerged from her bones. X-rays and CT scans revealed signs of arthritis in her joints, particularly in her knees and lower back, a common affliction among Neanderthals. This condition likely stemmed from the physically demanding lifestyle she led, where repetitive tasks, long-distance movement, and harsh environmental conditions took a toll on her body. The wear and tear on her joints suggested that even routine activities, like gathering food, preparing hides, or seeking shelter, required substantial physical effort. 
arthritis would have caused her chronic pain and stiffness, particularly in cold weather, yet the presence of healed injuries on her body suggested that Arya and her community found ways to endure, continuing to thrive despite physical discomfort. One of the most fascinating aspects of Arya's health was the evidence of a healed fracture in her left arm. This injury, which appeared to have occurred years before her death, had healed in a way that suggested her community supported her during the recovery process. The fracture was complex, affecting both the bone and surrounding tissue, and would have required weeks, if not months, to heal fully. Researchers speculated that Aria's community may have provided her with rest, protection, and perhaps even basic forms of physical care, allowing her arm to heal in alignment. This discovery pointed to a social structure where injured members were not left behind but were cared for, a practice that hints at empathy, cooperation, and a sense of duty within Neanderthal groups. Additional analysis revealed that Aria's teeth held valuable clues about her diet, health, and lifestyle. Dental wear patterns indicated a diet that included a mix of tough animal meat and fibrous plant material, supporting the findings from her stomach contents. Interestingly, her teeth also displayed evidence of what appeared to be toothpick grooves, small indentations that could have resulted from the use of tools or sticks to remove food particles. This practice suggested that Neanderthals like Arya may have had rudimentary dental hygiene habits, a surprising insight into their self-care routines. Her teeth also showed signs of enamel hypoplasia, a condition where the enamel development is interrupted, often due to nutritional stress during childhood, suggesting that she may have faced periods of food scarcity or illness early in life. The respiratory examination uncovered further signs of Arya's harsh living conditions. Her lungs displayed microscopic traces of soot and char, likely inhaled from spending extended periods near fire pits or shelters where smoke was prevalent. This soot accumulation pointed to the significant role that fire played in Neanderthal life, providing warmth, protection, and a means of cooking, yet also exposing them to respiratory irritants. The balance between the benefits and hazards of fire use highlighted the resilience of Neanderthals in adapting to their environment despite the risks suggesting that they may have developed physical tolerance or even behavioral strategies to manage smoke exposure. Aria's respiratory system thus bore the marks of a life lived in close proximity to fire, illustrating the Neanderthal ingenuity in using available resources despite inherent challenges. Scientists were particularly intrigued by a set of small fractures and micro-traumas on Aria's hands and forearms. These injuries, likely the result of repetitive, forceful actions such as butchering, scraping hides, or shaping tools, reflected the labor-intensive tasks that would have filled her daily life. The evidence of sustained microtrauma suggested that Neanderthal life required not only strength but also repetitive, skilled movements that contributed to their survival in such a challenging environment. Over time, these small injuries would have accumulated, causing pain and stiffness but ultimately contributing to the development of her physical resilience and skill. The microtraumas in her bones and muscles were a testament to a lifetime of purposeful action, where each mark on her body told a story of adaptation, endurance, and the mastery of essential survival skills. Another notable finding was evidence of nutritional stress episodes, identified through bands on her fingernails and microscopic analysis of her bone structure. These bands, known as Bose lines, indicated periods of growth interruption likely due to malnutrition, illness, or seasonal food shortages. This discovery offered a window into the periodic hardships faced by Aria's community, suggesting that they may have experienced fluctuating access to food, perhaps due to harsh winters, migration cycles, or shifts in available resources. Despite these challenges, her survival into adulthood demonstrated her resilience and the communal support that may have helped her endure periods of scarcity. The presence of nutritional stress markers underscored the constant negotiation between environmental resources and survival needs, reflecting the adaptability of her community to endure in a fluctuating landscape. In addition to these health markers, researchers found signs of inflammation in areas' bones, potentially related to an infection that could have caused chronic pain. The inflammation was localized to her lower limbs, suggesting she may have suffered from an injury or infection that spread through her joints. This condition would have added to the challenges of her daily life, yet the healed nature of her fractures and resilience to infection hinted that her immune system, perhaps bolstered by a protein-rich diet, 
was strong enough to manage and recover from such ailments. The physical strain evident in her bones painted a picture of Neanderthal life as one that demanded both physical and mental endurance, where recovery from illness or injury was a common part of survival. Area's health profile added depth to the emerging understanding of Neanderthal society as one built on mutual support and resilience. The combination of healed injuries, signs of care, and adaptation to environmental stresses pointed to a social framework where individuals were supported by their communities, even when incapacitated. This picture of Neanderthal life contradicted older narratives of their existence as solitary or purely survival-focused, offering instead an image of a community that valued and assisted its members through shared challenges. Area's resilience was as much a testament to her community's empathy and interdependence as it was to her personal strength, underscoring a humanity in Neanderthal life that transcended mere survival. As researchers concluded their examination, they marveled at the physical legacy Area's body had preserved. Each scar, healed fracture, and sign of wear represented a life lived in cooperation with others, a life that adapted to both external and internal challenges through collective effort. Area's health and endurance were reminders that Neanderthals were more than rugged survivors. They were individuals connected by social bonds that facilitated their survival in a harsh, demanding world. The findings from her health analysis provided a bridge between ancient and modern conceptions of resilience, revealing that qualities like endurance, empathy, and support were deeply embedded in the shared human experience. With Area's physical and genetic analysis complete, the team prepared to examine the cultural context surrounding her life and potential influences on later human communities. In Part 9, they would explore the cultural connections between Neanderthal practices and those of indigenous Siberian communities, investigating the possible legacies and shared traditions that extended from Neanderthal life into early human history. Through each phase of analysis, Area's story had continued to reveal a Neanderthal existence that was complex, communal, and enduring, qualities that offered profound insight into the shared lineage that connects humanity across time. Part 9. Connections with Indigenous Siberian Cultures As the research team moved forward in their examination, they began exploring the cultural links between Area's Neanderthal community and Indigenous Siberian groups. This line of inquiry aimed to understand whether aspects of Neanderthal life, beliefs, and survival techniques might have influenced early Homo sapiens communities who later inhabited the same regions. Anthropologists, historians, and cultural researchers joined the effort, pooling their expertise to analyze whether certain traditions, skills, or artifacts from indigenous Siberian cultures could trace back to a Neanderthal origin. This exploration was rooted in the hypothesis that cultural diffusion may have occurred across species, subtly influencing the practices of early human groups. The investigation started with a focus on clothing and survival strategies. Area sophisticated clothing construction, involving layered fur and stitching techniques, echoed the traditional attire of indigenous Siberian groups, such as the Evenki and Chukchi peoples, who inhabited the Siberian tundra thousands of years later. These groups, like Area's community, relied on animal hides and fur layers for warmth and protection against the cold, often incorporating materials from reindeer, arctic fox, and other animals suited to extreme climates. The parallel between Neanderthal and indigenous clothing techniques suggested that similar environmental pressures may have led to convergent cultural solutions, or perhaps that Homo sapiens who later settled in these regions adopted and adapted Neanderthal techniques that had already been refined for survival. Archaeologists compared areas tools and ornaments with those found in early Siberian human settlements. Among indigenous Siberian communities, symbolic carvings, bone ornaments, and small, polished stones have long held cultural significance, serving as markers of identity, talismans, or ritualistic objects. The smooth stones and carved bone found near Area's body reflected a similar use of materials for symbolic or ritualistic purposes. If Area's community had passed down the symbolic use of objects, it suggested that Neanderthals were not only survival-focused but also capable of artistic and spiritual expression. This connection hinted at a cultural legacy that may have influenced early human settlers, shaping traditions that continued for generations across species. The use of ochre in Area's burial site, a practice common among both Neanderthals and later human groups, offered another point of continuity. 
indigenous Siberian communities used ochre pigments in ceremonies, burials, and as body paint to signify cultural identity, protection, or ritual purpose. Areas communities' use of ochre suggested they may have assigned symbolic meanings to color and decoration, practices that aligned with traditions seen in Siberian indigenous cultures. This continuity reinforced the idea that color symbolism was a shared language, potentially passed from Neanderthal practices to early Homo sapiens who occupied the same areas. The presence of ochre and other pigments at multiple sites hinted at a cross-species tradition of ritual coloring that survived through shared values or learned behaviors. Language and communication also became central to this inquiry. While it is challenging to reconstruct Neanderthal language, anthropologists hypothesized that they may have developed simple communication methods through gestures, symbols, or proto-language. Indigenous Siberian cultures often incorporated storytelling, symbolism, and oral traditions to pass down knowledge, survival skills, and cultural values. If Neanderthals had developed proto-linguistic abilities or visual symbols, these could have influenced early humans in terms of establishing communal understanding, marking territories, or expressing shared beliefs. This potential continuity suggested that the foundations of symbolic communication were deeply embedded in the region's human history likely bridging the gap between Neanderthals and early humans through shared environmental pressures and mutual needs. Researchers began to explore whether Neanderthal practices related to hunting, gathering, and ecological awareness might have influenced early human survival strategies in Siberia. Indigenous Siberian communities, like the Evenki, traditionally relied on reindeer herding, sustainable hunting, and a deep understanding of the ecosystem to survive in harsh climates. Areas preserved body, along with her community's tool usage and dietary evidence, suggested a similarly profound relationship with the land. Neanderthals, as early stewards of the Siberian ecosystem, likely possessed specialized knowledge of animal behavior, migration patterns, and seasonal changes. Such ecological wisdom could have been passed down, perhaps indirectly, as early humans adapted to these regions, integrating Neanderthal knowledge into their own survival practices. In addition to survival practices, there were also intriguing parallels in spiritual beliefs and burial customs. Indigenous Siberian cultures often held animistic beliefs, attributing spirits to animals, stones, and natural features, seeing them as part of a connected, sacred world. The arrangement of stones, ochre, and carved bones around areas' body suggested that Neanderthals, too, may have held a form of proto-animism or a rudimentary belief in a spiritual world. If these practices indeed overlapped, they could represent one of humanity's earliest shared spiritual inclinations, passed from Neanderthals to early Homo sapiens through observed behaviors or shared experiences with the natural world. These similarities gave researchers new reasons to consider Neanderthals not as an isolated species but as contributors to the spiritual heritage that emerged in later human societies. Another aspect of cultural continuity researchers explored was the use of medicinal plants. Areas' body showed traces of yarrow and chamomile, plants with known medicinal properties that may have been used to treat ailments. Indigenous Siberian groups also utilized local flora for medicinal purposes, relying on their knowledge of herbs and natural remedies to maintain health. The presence of these plants in areas remains suggested that Neanderthals, like early humans, might have experimented with and understood the healing qualities of local plants. If early Homo sapiens observed Neanderthals using these plants, it could have led to the continuation and expansion of herbal medicine practices, forming one of the earliest recorded traditions of shared medicinal knowledge across species. The exploration of these connections led anthropologists to consider the role of cultural diffusion between Neanderthals and early humans. Although the interaction between these species is challenging to document, evidence of interbreeding and overlapping territories suggested that they likely encountered one another. During these encounters, early humans may have learned, observed, or adopted practices that Neanderthals had already refined, from tool usage to symbolic rituals. These exchanges would have created a cultural bridge, where Neanderthal contributions subtly shaped the cultural framework of Homo sapiens who moved into Siberia and beyond. The possible legacy of Neanderthal traditions within indigenous Siberian cultures reframed Neanderthals as active participants in the shared history of humanity.
Instead of viewing Neanderthals as a distinct, isolated species, researchers began to see them as contributors to the early human experience, with practices, beliefs, and knowledge that could have woven into the cultural tapestry of early humans. This insight deepened the understanding of human evolution, showing that the legacy of Neanderthals might persist not only in physical traits but also in cultural echoes that survive through traditions, rituals, and ecological knowledge. As the investigation of cultural connections concluded, the research team marveled at how areas' life and practices might continue to resonate in human societies today. The potential influence of Neanderthal practices on indigenous Siberian cultures suggested that human evolution is as much a story of shared knowledge as it is one of survival. Through each layer of her story, Arya had revealed that Neanderthals were more than ancient relatives. They were integral participants in the foundational chapters of human culture. With the final cultural analysis completed, the team prepared to reflect on the broader implications of Arya's discovery in Part 10. In this last section, they would consider how Arya's life had reshaped understanding of Neanderthals, bridging the ancient and modern worlds and redefining the human experience as one marked by continuity, adaptation, and shared legacy. Part 10. The Broader Implications With each layer of Arya's life and culture unraveled, researchers stood in awe of the broader implications her discovery held for understanding the human experience. The preserved remains of this Neanderthal, frozen in the Siberian permafrost for tens of thousands of years, had illuminated not only her individual life but also the shared legacy of resilience, community, and adaptation that threads through human history. Arya had shown scientists that Neanderthals were far more complex than previously believed. Innovators, craftsmen, caregivers, and perhaps even early visionaries in spirituality and ritual. Her discovery bridged a significant gap in human evolution connecting the ancient past with modern conceptions of what it means to be human. One of the most profound revelations was the insight Arya provided into the humanity of Neanderthals. Historically, they were often portrayed as primitive, brutish, and inferior in cognitive capabilities compared to Homo sapiens. Yet Arya's life, evident through her sophisticated clothing, the care she received from her community, and the symbolic objects arranged around her body, painted a radically different picture. She lived within a social structure that valued its members, provided care for the injured, and perhaps engaged in rituals that acknowledged life and death. This image of Neanderthals as empathetic, resourceful beings reshaped scientific perceptions and invited the world to view them as not only evolutionary kin, but as individuals with emotions, social bonds, and perhaps even a sense of spirituality. The interbreeding evidence within Arya's DNA raised important questions about the origins and evolution of modern humans. Her genome revealed that Neanderthals and Homo sapiens shared more than just overlapping territories. They shared a genetic lineage. This mingling of genes between the species suggested that Neanderthals contributed to the evolutionary development of modern humans, passing on not only physical traits but possibly even social behaviors, immunity, and adaptive skills that shaped the trajectory of Homo sapiens. These genetic exchanges challenged the idea of Neanderthals as an evolutionary dead end, instead highlighting them as integral participants in a human story, whose contributions continue to influence human health, resilience, and behavior. Arya's discovery also emphasized the adaptability and resilience of early humans in ways that resonated with the modern understanding of survival. Her body, equipped with genetic markers for cold adaptation and a high-fat diet, reflected the impressive ways in which Neanderthals had evolved to thrive in extreme environments. This resilience underscored a key evolutionary lesson. Human adaptability is a trait shared by multiple species within the Homo genus. Neanderthal's success in surviving harsh climates, managing resources, and crafting clothing suitable for extreme cold demonstrated that human innovation and adaptability were deeply rooted in our shared ancestry. The traits that enabled Arya to survive in prehistoric Siberia were the same traits that define humanity's resilience today. In the realm of cultural understanding, Arya's burial site offered an invaluable perspective on the origins of symbolic and ritualistic behavior. The presence of ochre, smooth stones, and a carved bone near her body hinted at a ritualistic practice, possibly even an early belief in an afterlife. 
These discoveries suggested that Neanderthals, like Homo sapiens, might have developed a sense of reverence for the dead, signifying a spiritual dimension previously unrecognized in Neanderthal culture. If Neanderthals did indeed engage in ritualistic practices, it implies that the foundations of human spirituality might have originated much earlier than previously believed, shared across species through a common respect for life, death, and the mysteries that lie beyond. This finding invited researchers and the public alike to consider Neanderthals as beings who grappled with questions of existence and meaning, much like modern humans do today. The connection between Neanderthal practices and indigenous Siberian cultures opened new avenues for exploring the continuity of human traditions. If early Homo sapiens absorbed aspects of Neanderthal knowledge, from tool use to ecological awareness, it suggested a cultural bridge that spanned generations and species. This continuity, reflected in the rituals, survival practices, and ecological knowledge of indigenous Siberian groups, painted Neanderthals as silent but influential contributors to human heritage. Areas community, once thought isolated and extinct, might have passed down fragments of their knowledge, subtly influencing the evolution of human societies long after Neanderthals themselves disappeared from the earth. Public response to Aria's discovery was profound, sparking a renewed appreciation for the depth of humanity's ancient roots. People around the world began to see Neanderthals not as a separate, inferior species, but as relatives whose lives were marked by strength, complexity, and a shared struggle for survival. Museums, universities, and research institutions launched exhibitions, lectures, and educational programs that invited the public to engage with the story of Arya and her people. Arya became a symbol of human resilience, bridging gaps not only between ancient and modern humans but also between science and public understanding. Her story fostered empathy, prompting people to view human evolution as a collective journey shaped by adaptation, cooperation, and shared experiences across time. The implications of Aria's discovery extended into scientific methodology as well. Her preservation in the permafrost highlighted the value of climate-affected regions like Siberia, where the frozen landscape has the potential to preserve other ancient bodies, artifacts, and ecosystems. Aria's legacy encouraged scientists to explore permafrost regions with renewed interest, recognizing that these frozen archives might contain untold histories of early humans and other hominins. The success of Aria's excavation demonstrated that with careful, interdisciplinary approaches, scientists could uncover and preserve invaluable information about early human life in ways that honor the past and advance our understanding of humanity's story. Moreover, Aria's discovery fostered discussions about ethical considerations in archaeology. As a once-living individual, Aria prompted scientists to consider the dignity and respect owed to ancient human relatives. Ethical guidelines were re-evaluated to balance scientific inquiry with a respect for the lives these ancient beings led, ensuring that future discoveries would treat early humans as more than specimens, acknowledging them as part of the human story. Aria's journey reminded scientists and the public alike that the past is not just something to be studied but to be honored, approached with respect and a sense of connection. Ultimately, Aria's story transformed how the world views Neanderthals and the concept of human evolution. Her life, preserved so unexpectedly in Siberian ice, redefined Neanderthals as beings of intelligence, creativity, and resilience, capable of adaptation, social cooperation, and perhaps even spirituality. Through Arya, the story of human evolution grew richer, illustrating that our lineage is not a solitary one but a tapestry woven from the threads of multiple human species. This realization fostered a deeper appreciation for the diversity within human history, encouraging a view of evolution as a shared journey shaped by countless lives, each contributing to the survival and growth of our species. As the researchers closed their analysis, they knew that Aria's legacy would continue to inspire further exploration into the mysteries of ancient life. Her story had bridged the gap between past and present, connecting humanity to its Neanderthal roots in ways that redefined the story of human existence. Aria's presence in the permafrost served as a poignant reminder that within every layer of history, there is a shared humanity, a resilience that transcends time, and a legacy that unites all those who have ever walked the earth. Through her, the story of humankind became more inclusive, a reminder that humanity's past is vast, interconnected, 
and deeply, profoundly shared.